Hello everybody, this is Philip Martin. This is On Film, On Video, and it is uh, December 23rd, 2022. This is the, not the last program of the year. This is the penultimate program of the year because I will do one next week unless something happens. Um, I've taken a little time off lately, but I'm not going to take next week off, I don't think. Anyway, we're, hey, it's Christmas time. Um, all the movies are out. Well, not all of them, but you know, we're kind of, I think, always think we're kind of lucky in our tertiary markets, uh, places that aren't New York and uh, Los Angeles, because we will be getting some really good movies over the next few months. I mean, January 27th, we're going to have Women Talking uh, is going to be here. Uh, I think it's going to be on the 27th. We'll probably get The Quiet Girl, which is another film that nobody has seen that I really liked uh, sometime around Jan in January or maybe early February. Um, we stretch it out here. We don't have completely a dead zone. You know, it's always, you think about, um, you know, January and February as being this kind of dead zone for when the studios release films they don't think are very promising. But in our market, we're still getting some of the big films that uh, just had, you know, like dip their toe in the water in L.A. and um, Los Angeles for, or Los Angeles and New York for awards purposes. So we're still going to get those in the next couple of weeks. But a lot of people go to the theater over Christmas. A lot of people are looking for stuff to see, and there is stuff to see. Um, like this thing. If you could go anywhere in the whole world, where would you go? I always want to be part of something bigger. Yes. Babylon is about a group of people who find themselves in early Hollywood at a time of extreme depravity and debauchery and excess. It's the biggest thing I've ever tried to do. Action. It was such an insane time. It was just wild, like the Wild West. The story follows multiple characters that have an ambition to be a part of something bigger than themselves. We've got to innovate. We've got to inspire. Jack Conrad is the biggest film actor at the top of his game, and he's calling a lot of the shots. Take two frames off the tail and three more off the head. Manny is our guide through the story. These are eyes and ears from an outsider's point of view. He's a dreamer, someone that is trying to find his way. You can feel it. It's something bigger than life. Nelly is an aspiring actress. She's like a tornado. Hello, Colin! She's the part! Ah! And she's not gonna let anyone stand in her way. I got here on my terms, not theirs. Party time! It's a uniquely different cinematic experience. And it's going to be truly amazing. It shows a side of Hollywood beyond what you could have imagined. I mean, so much trouble. People are going to be really shocked to see how crazy it was. Is this going to be what it's going to be? It's really funny at times. Look at these idiots! It's really sexy at times. The film is so big, it's really an epic. Yeah! It's just phenomenal. Yes, Babylon. Um, I've seen it. Three hours and nine minutes. It's interesting. It's, um, I have to say this. I mean, I think that if I saw it as a miniseries, I'd probably like it. <laughs> or I'd like it more if it were an extended miniseries. Uh, it's just chock full of stuff. It's just kind of, it's a big ambitious film. It's got some tonal problems, I think. It's got some problems. Margot Robbie does not look like a, a woman from the 1920s. Um, I mean, her hairstyles and her dresses and stuff. It is excessive. And um, it's a little bit on the nose. It's a little bit um, cliched. I totally agree with the review that uh, our Piers Marchant uh, wrote about it. I think he wrote a really good review, really strong review. And also... If you're looking at today's papers, be sure and check out his uh, After Sun essay, unless I had to cut it out for space, because if it's not there, well, then you'll see it soon. But 
you know, he's he's really done some good work this year, and this is um, I'm really happy to have this two for for him on this final thing. But anyway, um, yeah, yeah, it's it's the kind of movie that were it half an hour shorter, I would think it would almost get almost be a shoe in for best academy uh, best. Um, picture Academy Award nomination because it's a movie about Hollywood and it's got a lot of Hollywood you know sort of um, lore embedded in it I mean you can sort of see the influences and guess who everybody is supposed to be and that sort of thing so it's an interesting movie it's not my favorite there's another movie opening this week that uh Surprise me, and it's this one. Hi, I am Antonio Banderas. Before you see Puss in Boots and Last Wish, let's see if I can catch you up on his whole life story in just 90 seconds. I have to tell the story of my life. That's the Your whole life. life. My whole life. Okay, 20 years. <sighs> Young Puss. Okay, reset. Let me just do this again. Young Puss was a nameless kitty until he met his brother in arms, Humpty Dumpty. In the hunt for magic beings, Puss met a feminine feline who could match him his for his. Kitty soft paws. But Humpty Dumpty, he had a great fall. All the kings. Oh, all the kings, horses. <laughs> 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 I was thinking, all the kings, what a weird way to finish a line. All the king horses and all the kings, man, couldn't put Humpty together again. Humpty? Suddenly, Puss had a new crew. Shrek, Fiona, and a donkey named Donkey. A journey that led to him getting trapped in the body of an ass. Of an ass. Oh. Anthony, you can't say I can say yes, because I am Puss in Boots. He can say anything. All right, here you go. Shrek made a deal with a devious Rumpelsting. 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 I don't know who that is. Rumpelsting. Rumpelsting. Like a twist tonger. Yeah, Rumpelsting. <laughs> Rumpelsting. Shepherd of your dreams. Okay. On their next adventure, Shrek made a deal with a devious Rumpelsting. <laughs> Sending Puss and all his friends careening into an alternate universe. <laughs> Feed me, if you dare. But everyone knows, Puss was made for a life of action, danger, a life of great food, passionate love, and constant excitement. A life of many lives. And the epic tale of Puss and Boots is not over now. Everyone's favorite gazpacho loving, swashbuckling, fear defying feline has found out that he has burned through eight of his nine lives. Uh, no! Puss and Boots doesn't need a spotter. Watch! Uh -huh. Watch! Hola, señorita. Do you like gazpacho? Getting those lives back will send Puss on his grandest quest yet. Check it out! When Puss in Boots, The Last Wish comes to theaters this Christmas. <laughs> wow, I did it. Nine live in 90 seconds. <sighs> Close enough. I did it. Bye. Yeah, yeah, I didn't really expect much of this film. I figured it was just one of those, well, we're running out this, the clock on Shrek now. I mean, sort of like 20 years later, let's finally get this final thing. But it's... All the reviews have been kind to it. It looks good to me. Uh, I think Antonio Banderas, who's no bigger than Junior Mint, uh, <laughs> Private Joke, which is bad radio and probably bad uh, vlog casting or whatever we're doing here, uh, but uh, he's a very small man, that's what I'm, all I'm saying, uh, is uh, very charming in it. He's, it's a good role for him. It's a, The animation's great. I think it's, uh, you know, I, I like it. If you're going to go see something with the kids on Christmas Day... Puss in Boots is a great thing to be able to go see. There's a lot of stuff in there that's, um, you know, it's a DreamWorks film. So there's, it's not a Pixar. It, put it that way. It's not Pixar, but it's DreamWorks. And DreamWorks is really, usually pretty good. And there's always something for, you know, the older people to kind of enjoy. You know, there's little visual puns and there's things like that. 
I don't hate it, and uh, I'm good for good for them. I'm glad they actually produce some quality family entertainment because one of the things that we lack in this country is family entertainment that actually respects its clientele, that actually treats kids with the respect they deserve. I mean, I hate these things that sometimes pass as, you know, kiddie movies. They're just just awful, cynical enterprises, opportunities to sell toys. This is better than that. It's not a great film, but it's a good film, and it's... Yeah, I'm happy to have it. Um, yeah, I don't want to throw away my, my uh, top ten list for that I'm running on Sunday, but I do want to talk a little bit about the year movies. Like, I just had, I just got an email uh, from uh, one of our contributors, and we're going to, over the next few weeks, start running the top ten list from our critics and our contributors and friends of the program, various people that uh, we've actually, over the last 20 years, have sort of cultivated relationships with and have contributed to our, to our pages. And it's really easy week for me, or at least that's how it started out, and now it actually gets to be one of those things, I've got to compile it, I've got to put it together, it takes a while, but it's a labor of, labor of love, you know, I love it, um, and I I think it was a pretty good year for movies, now this is not going to be a majority opinion, I've already seen some people say, well this is a terrible year for movies, also, you know, or a mediocre year, or it's, you know, but I don't know. I mean, you had Avatar. It's not my film. Not my film. But you've had Avatar, and you've had Top Gun, which, again, is not exactly my film. I liked Top Gun. I liked Top Gun Maverick. Uh, I, I thought it was thrilling. I also thought, and the first thing I thought was, you know, when I saw it, I said, well, it's both. It manages to be both a beat-by-beat -beat remake of the original and I mean, a, a, a cover version of... Uh, Star Wars A New Hope. I mean, the whole, you know, I don't want to give it away. Is it too late to spoil it? I mean, is it too, I mean, can we spoil it now? But the whole sequence with the, the valley and dropping the bomb in there, that's Luke Skywalker doing the Death Star. And I'm not the first to uh, publicly acknowledge that. But I, but I saw it, as soon as I saw it in the theaters, that's exactly what I thought but you've got, you've got these two huge movies. You've got something like Nope, which is a great crowd-pleasing film. And then you have all these little films, like Banshees of Inisherin, which is a wonderful film. Wonderful film. I stand by that. Tar, which is a problematic film for some people, but I think it's a really good film. You know? Uh, you've got this thing coming out, and it's not going to be here until probably late January or... Um, early September, early September, early February, um, The Quiet Girl, which I just is a remarkable movie. Um, I, I don't know. I just saw a lot of good stuff this year. I don't ever think it's a bad year in movies, you know. As someone who sees a lot of movies, I hardly ever think, well, this was, this was an off year. Um, that was a pretty decent year, pretty decent year. Uh, one of the films that's coming out, and I think it's going to be here on January 27th, that's a very strange film, and I didn't care for um, this director's previous feature film, um, Take the Stance. I didn't like it, Sarah Pauly's film, and I've probably said mean things about it, uh, which is... Yeah, yeah, I always respected Sarah Pauly as both an actress and a director. Uh, she's done really good work. Her documentary... Um, which name escapes me, which came out on the heels of Take the Stance, was very good. It was about her own family. Um, but she's done something really special with this film, Women Talking, and I hope that uh, you guys um, will see it when it comes out. It's coming out, like I said, in a uh, month or so. <laughs> I can't out. Yeah, time is tough. But yeah, I think by the I think it's January 27th is when it's going to be here. And uh, after that, or around that time, we'll get the Quiet Girl. And you know, living in a tertiary market is not the worst thing in the world when it comes to January and February for the movies. So here's a little look at uh, women talking. Why does love, the absence of love, the end of love, the need for love? result in so much violence.
Miriam Taves' book had this very profound impact on me. We must decide now to stay and fight or leave. We will not do nothing. It had such hard truths around reckoning and rage and faith and forgiveness. We will be forced to leave the colony if we don't forgive the men. I cannot forgive them. I will never forgive them. Women Talking is about a group of women who have dealt with assault by the males of their community, debating on what their future could be. I want to stay and fight. But won't we lose the fight to the men and be forced to forgive them anyway? Our first choice to write and direct was Sarah Polly, and there was no end to her commitment and courage. It was really important for me to imagine those landscapes and the canvas on which the story was going to be told. Sarah wanted to tell this story in a way that honored these women and their faith. Does entering the kingdom of heaven mean nothing to any of you? Surely there must be something worth living for in this life, not only the next. Miriam declares it an act of wild female imagination, which is what we wanted to do cinematically. Amazing. <laughs> it was just so moving seeing these characters come to life. The dynamic between the actors was just powerful. We know that we are bruised and infected and pregnant and terrified. Miriam and Sarah built a story that is thought provoking and unifying. It's gorgeous, it's haunting. There's a real sense of solidarity, of hope. Hope for the unknown is good. Just better than hatred of the familiar. We are living in a time where there's a lot we have to change. This film offers a window into what it looks like when people have to imagine another way forward. When we've liberated ourselves, we will have to ask ourselves who we are. Really beautiful. We got it. Thank you. Hey, I'm back. I just wanted to add one thing. This the weather's about to hit. That's what they're telling us. They're telling us the weather is coming. It's going to be a terrible day for the rest of today and tomorrow. Right now it's forty four degrees or something and we just got back from walking the dog a couple of miles, so I don't know. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I hadn't uh, filed this yet. I hadn't uploaded it yet, so I thought I'd add this. This is just a little cool thing, uh, a movie that's coming that looks really interesting to me, and uh, I, I just can't wait for this. So yeah, Merry Christmas. We'll see you on the other side, guys. Bye. Since the beginning of time, since the first little girl ever existed, there have been dolls. But the dolls were always and forever baby dolls. Until... 